Coming up on Hands on iOS, if you've ever wanted to use your own fonts on your iOS devices, well, I'm gonna show you how to do it. Hands on iOS is brought to you from Twit's LastPass Studios. You're focused on security, but are your employees? Well, LastPass can ensure that they are by making access and authentication seamless, whether they're working in the office or remote. Visit lastpass.com slash twit to learn more. This is Twit. This episode of Hands on iOS is brought to you by IT Pro TV. Visit itpro.tv slash twit for an additional 30% off for the lifetime of your active consumer subscription. Use the code twit30 at checkout. So you are in Apple's Pages app on your iOS device, or maybe you're using Photoshop or some other app on your phone, your iPad, your iPod Touch, wherever, and you have a favorite font that you really wish you could use, but for some reason, it's not already on the device. Apple, of course, does not include every single typeface there is out there on your device. But if you have a favorite and there's one that you want or multiple that you want to add, there's actually a way to make that happen. Apple added the ability to add fonts to your iOS device in uh, not too long ago. But I have to say the process is a little bit um convoluted, uh, to put it mildly. It is a process that involves installing a special configuration profile on your device. And if you know anything about configuration profiles, then the hair might be standing up on the back of your neck right now. That's because typically configuration profiles are used to give developers access to certain features of your iOS device that they wouldn't normally have. So maybe you work for a company that gives out iPhones or iPads or other devices as part of the process. And typically when those devices are handed out, they include configuration profiles that include information like the Wi-Fi password for the business of which you're a part or information about where to return the device if it's lost or stolen. And then they can use that information to sort of gain more knowledge about your device, like checking on its location or learning about app usage and things like that. So configuration profiles can be incredibly detailed and can provide information to people that you may or may not want to have that information. That is the thing you need to know about configuration profiles. But here's the deal. With the app that I'm going to show you, the configuration profile is for one thing and one thing only. It is for installing fonts on your iOS device. It doesn't do anything else. And that is the entirety of that configuration profile. So let's dig in and let me talk a little bit more about why I feel that this is an app that you can definitely trust if you want to install, install fonts on your iOS device. I'm mixing things up today. We are going to be talking about the uh, addition of fonts on your iOS device using the iPad. So here we are, you can see my iPad and I actually already have an app open up. This app is called Fontcase, and Fontcase is an app that you can find for free in the App Store and we'll include a link in the show notes so that you can check it out. And Fontcase, its only job is to install fonts on your iOS device and give you an ability to uh, check in on what typefaces you have installed, make adjustments and see information about them. So for example, I have Futura Standard Bold installed on my device. And when I tap on that, I can see the whole profile of it. I can see some, uh, for example, this excellent sentence that involves all of the characters of the alphabet, how Razorback jumping frogs can level six peaked gymnasts. And then I get some information about where it comes from, the file name, the postscript name, uh, what style of typeface this is, whether or not it's monospaced, and who makes it and the, its current version. So that's some quick information about the font. And you can see my list of fonts that I have installed on my device. That little check mark to the left says these fonts are currently installed. So I've got quite a few fonts. Uh, many of them are one font that are that sort of is broken up into pieces here so if i were to go to i'm going to pop out of here and i'm going to swipe back and go to my settings app and then choose fonts and you can see the list here is much smaller that's because things like futura are all dropped within the one typeface area and down here we have universe 
and each of those typefaces are stored here. So you can also see within this how those typefaces look, including a bit of lorem ipsum text and the entire uh, glyph library that's available for each of those fonts. So for example, ah, Universe Oblique, quite nice. And Railway, one of my favorite fonts uh, here in its entirety. So I can see those fonts within my uh, font library. Again, that's general and then fonts within the settings app. But we'll go ahead and head back to font case. So font case is a free app. And typically when you get a free app, you go, hmm, where are they making their money? And then when the, the app asks to install a configuration profile on your device, you go, hmm, do I really want them to install a configuration profile on my device if they are not making money off of this? Well, I've got good news. Fontcase partnered with an excellent company that is called The Icon Factory. The Icon Factory is a, an app making company that has been in the business for a very long time. And in that period of time, they have, without a shadow of a doubt, treated their customers with respect and have not taken advantage of their customers in any way. So this app sort of came together with the team at, Icon, at the Icon Factory and said, look, we're going to use the reputation of the Icon Factory. The Icon Factory actually was the ones who said, use our reputation. We'll check to make sure that this app is okay. And you then will know that this app is okay to be used. So it is, again, kind of a scary thing to do a configuration profile. But once you know how it works, then you can understand that the only thing that's being installed with this configuration profile is the ability to check fonts. So you can see even in this about screen, it talks about, you should be careful about downloading configuration profiles. You're giving a developer the ability to update your device settings. This includes embedding identity trackers, adding risky certificates and network configurations, and even changing the apps on your home screen. Now, as you can see, they talk about how this app is created by, or, or rather is partnered up with the Icon Factory. It gives them the sort of backing to say, look, here's how we're establishing trust. The source code of this app is available to review, so it is open source. And then it's backed by a company that's treated customers with respect for over 20 years. That means that you can count on both of those things. An open source code means I can go and look at it and make sure that there's nothing being installed that I don't want there. This episode of Hands on iOS is brought to you by IT Pro TV. If you're interested in an IT career but aren't sure which one is right for you, IT Pro TV can help. Sign up for a premium membership and let an expert guide you. With over 4,000 hours of IT training, you can get the certifications you need to be successful. Go to itpro.tv slash twit and use the code twit30 for an additional 30% off for the lifetime of your active consumer subscription. That's itpro.tv slash twit and use the code twit30. IT Pro TV, build or expand your IT career and enjoy the journey. So now that we've got that all out of the way, let's talk about how we actually go and install a font. You've downloaded Fontcase and you have a font on your computer that you want to install on your iOS device. So you're gonna wanna use either Dropbox or iCloud Drive or one of those systems to be able to access that from the iPad app or iPhone app or wherever you happen to have font case open. So I've taken an, uh, a font, a set rather of font files that I want to install on my iPad and I've placed them in a folder and dropped that in my iCloud drive. Again, you can use Dropbox or another service, but that's what I'm using. I tap on fonts and then up here in the top left, you can see there's an import button. I'll tap on import and I'm already in my iCloud Drive. It pops up the file browser. And so I just scroll down and there is oh, one of my favorite typefaces in all of existence, the Gotham font family. I'll tap on that. And then I can choose to select the typefaces that I want to add to my iPad. So when I tap select in the top right, I can then choose on the left, select all. And then I tap open. It will download those fonts and then install them 
onto the in in the app. It does not yet have them installed on the iPad. This is another process. So I'll scroll down and I can see under Futura that Gotham Black, Gotham Black Italic, Gotham Black or Gotham Bold, and all of the other versions of Gotham are here and ready to be installed on my device. So that little icon to the left shows that yes, it's been imported, but it has not yet been installed. The check mark means installed. So now I'll tap install. And then what happens is it pops up a little screen that is creating the configuration profile that you need to install on your iPad or iPhone or whatever device in order to be able to use these fonts across the whole system. So I have to tap download fonts and then it says, oh, this website is trying to download a configuration profile. Do you want to allow this? Yes, I do. I tap allow and the profile has been downloaded. Now I tap close and I go ahead and tap done in the top left corner, but the fonts aren't installed yet. That's because I have to go to the settings app now. So I'll swipe back to head to the settings app and you can see that it immediately pops up in the top left profile downloaded. I'll tap profile downloaded. And then it says, hey, do you want to install this font case installation, this configuration profile? By golly, yes, I do. I tap install. I type in my passcode, which you won't be able to see here. I hit enter. I tap install in the top right corner. It says, hey, this profile is not signed. Are you sure? Again, I'm okay with this. And then I tap install again. It really wants to make sure you want this thing installed. Then I tap done. And now you can see that I had a font case installation already. It replaces the previous one with the new one that has more font files in it. Now, if I tap on general to go back and then I tap fonts and I can see that Gotham is right there in the installed fonts. I can see all the different versions of it, bold, black, etc. cetera. Da -da -da -da, fantastic. And I'm gonna go ahead and head back to the font book app so that I can, font case rather, head back to the font case app so that I can make sure that Gotham has been installed. And there it is, look, Gotham in all of its forms, black, bold, etc. Now, it becomes just as easy to remove fonts from the list that you no longer want there. If I swipe to the left, I can delete individual fonts and then I would just go through the process again of tapping install and installing the configuration profile without the fonts that I no longer need. As I mentioned, it is a bit of a convoluted process. You have to install configuration profiles on your device in order to access fonts and that's not great. Hopefully Apple is going to work on a better system to install fonts on your device at some point, but until then, this is the way to do it. So there are lots of different font applications out there. Some of them cost, some of them are free. Some of them give you access to online libraries of fonts, but it's important to note that a configuration profile will have to be installed in any case. So you wanna make sure that it's an app that you can trust. Knowing that the Icon Factory backs this app makes me feel a lot more comfortable about using it to install fonts on my device. So I hope that helped you figure out how you can install custom fonts to use in pages or any app that takes that makes use of those individual fonts on your phone, your iPad, etc. And of course, I want to thank you for tuning into this episode of Hands on iOS. Of course, I will have more in the future. And if you're not subscribed, go ahead and do that. You just head to twit.tv slash HOI. Also, if you have any questions, you can send them to handsonios at twit.tv. Happy to answer them, happy to provide feedback, or uh, maybe there's some app that you're looking for or some accessory that maybe you want me to check out and talk about. Let me know all of that at handsonios at twit.tv. And for those of you over on YouTube, of course, uh, you're probably already there if you're watching me on YouTube, but that URL is youtube.com slash hands on iOS. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button, hit the like button, hit the bell, hit any of those buttons that need to be pressed and hit. And I thank you so much for tuning in to another episode. I'll see you next time. Be sure to check out the other shows on the network, like my other show, Hands On Wellness. I love to share different tips and tricks that's going to help you get a better grasp on your personal wellness. Just go to twit.tv slash how and subscribe now.